Hi there, this is Dr. Meyer Flask. Chromatographic calculations can be divided into two different varieties, the calibrated variety and the uncalibrated variety. In this presentation, we're going to talk about one of the uncalibrated variety, the kind known as area percent. The area percent calculation is one which determines the internal relationships between and among all of the peaks in a chromatogram consisting of more or less well-resolved peaks. This calculation can't be applied to gel permeation chromatograms or to other chromatograms in which the peaks are not well resolved for reasons which we'll go into. The area percent calculation can be applied to any kind of chromatographic data that occur in the form of more or less well resolved peaks such as gas chromatography using any kind of detector you can imagine High pressure liquid chromatography, similarly uh, applied to all detectors, and ion chromatography in which the individual components are not identified. We don't apply area percent calculations or normalized area percent calculations to size exclusion or gel permeation or simulated distillation chromatograms unless the simulated distillation is based on identified peaks because in the case of size exclusion or gel permeation the interpretation isn't based on relationships between uh, fairly well resolved peaks. The interpretation of size exclusion chromatograms is based on area slices of much broader peaks as we'll show you. In this frame we see two different kinds of chromatograms. On the left a chromatogram consisting of well-resolved individual peaks and on the right a chromatogram consisting of a pair of well-resolved peaks or at least apparently a pair of well-resolved peaks. In fact the large peak in the center is actually a series of closely fused peaks uh, which can't be separated uh, using the chromatographic mechanism uh, in use for the uh, for the separation. In fact this is a uh, size exclusion separation of a polymer showing uh, the polymer and residual monomer. Notice the relative widths of the peaks in the chromatogram. In the GPC chromatogram on the right the principal peak is almost five minutes wide whereas in the conventional chr uh, chromatogram on the left the widest peak is no more than a quarter of a minute wide. This makes for easier detection in the case of the uh, conventional chromatogram, uh, not to say that uh, the other peak is poorly detected, but to develop area percent information would be meaningless in this case. The area percent calculation gives an approximation of the relative composition of the sample. It assumes that all of the compounds in the sample will respond to the detector in use and that they all respond equally. Needless to say, these are two assumptions which may or may not be true and they certainly are misleading unless one take careful account of them. The assumptions that we made lead to some errors which may or may not be significant depending on the nature of the sample that we're analyzing. Relative error um, in the case of very similar compounds is fairly low within 15% of, of the actual calibrated values. 
In the case of unrelated compounds, the error can be very significant and fairly dramatic on the order of two to three hundred percent. As we said earlier, area percent reports are uncalibrated. The area percent of an individual peak is given by its area divided by the total peak area in the chromatogram, the quotient multiplied by a hundred as you see in the equation. The total peak area of the chromatogram is given by summing up all of the areas of all of the peaks in the chromatogram. It's at this point that one of our assumptions can get in our way. If there is a peak in the sample which does not respond to the detector in use, it will not be accounted for in this procedure. To see how this calculation works, let's look at an example which is derived from real life but cleaned up for presentation. Our sample is a hydrocarbon mixture typical of what we might find in the production from a sour gas well. It consists of hydrocarbons, permanent gases, and hydrogen sulfide. We won't bore you with a description of the chromatograph that produced this chromatogram. That's for another presentation entirely. Instead, what we show you is the chromatogram that results from separating this mixture in the best way that we know how in the shortest time that we could arrange. Our data reduction process consists of two steps. In the first step, we sum up the areas of all of the peaks. You'll see here an algebraic form of the summation expression and an explicit form, an arithmetical form of the summation expression. You will notice in the next slide that the total area is shown in the bottom cell of the table. This table presents the results of the first step of our area percent calculation, that is the summing of all of the areas of all of the peaks in the chromatogram. You'll notice that we have a total area in the chromatogram of 241,900,500 microvolt seconds, which is the typical unit of area for chromatographic calculations. Having summed up the areas of all of the peaks in the chromatogram, we now in step two divide the area of each individual peak by the total area and then multiply the quotient by a hundred. As you see in the example below, um, for C6 plus, we, we're showing 12.6 percent, which is uh, 30,750,000 divided by the uh, total area of the chromatogram. Finally, we tabulate the results. You'll notice that for each individual peak in the chromatogram, we now have a percentage which expresses the relative amount of the individual component in the chromatogram, assuming that all of the, all of the peaks in the chromatogram respond exactly the same way. To summarize what we've done, our process consists of two steps. After detecting and integrating all of the peaks in the chromatogram, we sum up all of their areas to obtain the total peak area. Then we divide the area of each peak by the total peak area and multiply the quotient by 100 to obtain the area percent. Although it is widely thought that area percent is an approximation of the relative composition of the sample, it's actually an, a representation of the relative allocation of peak area. This relative allocation may, may be, but it isn't necessarily related to the composition of the sample. Remember the pitfalls involved in area percent analysis. It assumes identical response from all of the analytes in the sample. This isn't a reliable assumption.
The copyright to this presentation is owned by Asiatrope Studios, a division of the Cine Nomine Press. All rights are reserved. Thanks for joining us in this discussion of chromatographic calculations. On behalf of Drs. Earl and Meyer Flask and our cousin Professor Vol Flask, thanks again and we'll see you on the next one.